In this video, we're going to be printing and painting some Gallo Dark terrain. Is it going to be painted to a high standard? No. Am I going to finish it in a timely fashion? No. Am I going to watch The Mandalorian while painting it? Yes. Will these be achievable results for the average hobbyist? Probably. Now, this is the ship assault internal walls from Saucerman Studios. Saucerman? Saucerman. And they do a lot of STLs, particularly for terrain and buildings and such. I think they're Australian. And just as a fellow Aussie, I was obliged to help when they reached out. And so you can check out their website, link in the description below. And this is something I wanted to have a go at for a while now to print some kind of modular terrain that I could paint up and have on a like kind of, I don't know, a skirmish wargaming board. And hopefully it's something that I can use for future battle reports. I've already, I'm gonna probably talk about later, but I've been having a few battles on my desk as just kind of after I've printed and assembled it all. Now I've printed some terrain on the channel before and you can watch that, but I feel like I, this is on another level. Like it's enough terrain to actually have a board where the other ones I was kind of like dabbling with different stuff. And you can check out those videos. On their website, it says that PLA or resin works well for this terrain. So obviously, like I said, I'm using resin. The Saturn II's build plate is just like phenomenal in terms of its size. So like I was printing out, like I think I did it in like three, maybe four prints because I forgot some stuff, but to get everything done. Basically the walls kind of interlock into like a, a corner join. So like it's kind of corner join and the walls kind of slide in and out and you got some like little gap fillers that you can put in if you want to add some stuff to that. And you can make some like, yeah, your classic corner configurations or like S's or long corridors and stuff like that. It's very modular. One thing to note is when you're looking at the files, there's like one of the joiners is like in brackets it's tight or like something on those lines. I would just print the regular one because I found that tight one too tight for me. And that's probably just like the tolerance of my resin setting. So, oh gosh, I have to click now. My computer like has a fit. Slicing. So how did I slice these files to load them into my printer? I wasn't sure if I could print these straight on the build plate. I've never actually done that before. I usually, even if it's like flat, just raise it a bit and put supports just because I don't know. I don't want to have to deal with like trying to sort out stuff like elephant's foot and things like that, where it kind of gets squished a bit or just like damaging the print in removing it from the build plate. So I use supports. What I did was I printed everything vertically because sometimes people say I like to angle stuff, but I think for these straight walls and way that I was printing them, they weren't too thin that they might get bend and stuff like that. But like, yeah, just printing straight. Like there's a lot of force on the build plate, but with my settings, the low lift speed, the high lift distance, I was confident that this would work. What I did was I got, I highlighted all the files and lifted them up four millimeters off the build plate. I then just auto supported it with heavy supports. One thing you'll notice is the auto supports aren't that great for where they place them. So I had to go back in and like support the edges because if you don't put the edges properly at the start of the print, they'll start to bow just with the way that printing works. And so, yeah, they just won't be flat. And I've tried to mitigate that with sanding and stuff as well. If you have Lychee Slicer Pro, there's like features where you can drag and along straight lines and stuff and put supports and it'll do that automatically and you can adjust the spacing. But as a peasant, I don't have the pro version, so I'm just manually clicking them. And so, yeah, you want to make sure that all the edges of the base that you're printing from are supported just so that yeah you minimize that bowing anything above the base it had auto supports that were heavy so i highlighted all of them and changed them to medium now those supports didn't really need to be too strong because they're kind of like holding the different kind of details or like anything sticking out from the walls just to give them a bit extra support but like for the most part like it's pretty good like you don't really need supports but i'm just hitting auto just to save myself some time the prints turned out pretty well i didn't have any fails one of these gates i don't know if you can see that one of these gates I snap and so they've just become like ends for the connectors just yeah it was just like you can see the gap is kind of small and then the other fail I had oh this is not the best way to show it but like this pipe did split and I think it was just because it's quite a, a big print and maybe it needed some more supports I don't know the other one printed out fine that I have so I wasn't too sure what caused that fail but because it's still printed I wasn't going to investigate too much now once everything was printed I removed the supports like heavy supports are quite tricky to remove I was using like a scraper just to kind of really pry them off making sure I was wearing gloves like that and they were washed properly before I did that. After that, I sanded like the remaining little nubs off the base and tried to get the base flush. Like, like I was saying, like there was a bit of bowing because I didn't support all of them properly. And so we want to try to get the base, yeah, a bit more smooth. I made sure I was wearing respirator and gloves just because the fine resin particles, they are like really bad for your respiratory system. So you want to make sure you're not breathing in any of that. I primed the models in gray, but in hindsight, I should have gone with a brown primer just because that's kind of my starting color 
but I would have done actually black as well, but like I'd, I was out of black primer. Because this is terrain, I'm not gonna be using much of my expensive miniature painting acrylics, whereas instead I'm gonna be using some cheaper craft acrylic paint. Just with some random colored paints, it was just adding, yeah, just random colors to the different walls and other sections and pipes just to add some variation in that. A lot of those colors would be kind of lost, but it was just a way to kind of, yeah, just add some variation so it wasn't this brown black wall. I started off using brown craft paint and just because there was a lot to cover and so I thinned it down a little and just kind of gave it, yeah, just a very liberal coat. Wanting to make sure everything was brown, but if some gray was showing through, it wasn't the end of the world. And I was wearing gloves just because I was like racing through this. Now, once that was finished, I did a heavily watered down kind of wash with a black craft paint and this didn't really matter if like if it wasn't fully coated in brown it was kind of to like I don't know a very cheap and very less effective version of null oil it it worked and added streaks it was adding texture and variation and so I did that because these steps like don't require too much accuracy I was watching the Mandalorian like I've I've really enjoyed kind of like watching the show but yeah I'm only starting at season one the little frog green dude is like I don't know wild like choking people lighting people on fire that, yeah that I don't know I then went over with a gold and silver dry brush, mainly gold for like the wall and some of the pipes and things like that and silver for some other edges just because I didn't want it all gold or all silver. And those metallics lightened the prints as well. So it's like it kind of brightened it up. The edges got a bit lighter and it allowed, particularly the silver allowed using army paint and speed paint to add some more variations to panels. And I was really focusing on reds, oranges, and yellows with a few blues and greens in there as well. But the speed paints I think really worked well because they're translucent. Hello there. Originally I was gonna go for an oil wash, um, but I screwed up and got the chemicals wrong. If anyone knows any good tutorials for oil washes, I think it's just I needed mineral spirits or white spirits. I'm not going to tell you what I used. That's too embarrassing. Yeah, one of the reasons like this, these aren't too detailed is because there's like 20 plus walls plus the joiners and stuff. I think there was like 40 or 50 pieces I needed to paint. And so even a st adding a step that's only 30 seconds, that adds another half an hour, 45 minutes to the whole painting process. And so I really wanted to make sure that these steps were minimal, but also gave like a very striking effect. Like it kind of, yeah, particularly if you've got some bright colored models, I've got a lot of orcs, so that green, I want it to pop next to the models. Like I'd, I'd, I want my models to kind of stand out against this kind of grimy backdrop to protect the paint job because I know the prints are going to be moving in and out of each other and maybe they're going to be stored in boxes and stuff and bumping up against each other I varnished the models now I just used a spray can varnish that I got from an art shop. And one of the things that I noticed was that some of the print started to crack and not the actual print itself, but the paint on it. And so I was doing a quick Google and it was saying that some of the paint mustn't have cured properly. So the varnish doesn't interact with it. And so some of them did crack, but it did add a cool effect. Like if all the, the print, like the paint jobs cracked across the whole board, I think I would have been annoyed, but I think it worked for this cause it wasn't too much. One of the other things I didn't mention is there's like these interlocking doors and stuff. So there's like movable parts, little flaps and things you can have. So you can, if you're playing in games, you can add mechanics of like doors being closed and maybe giving them like hit points. And if you hit the door, you can bash it down. A model has to get to a certain point to activate that door. And then the army on the other side of the ship can get through like things like that, which I think is really cool. And it's just a little fun. Like, I don't know, just pulling the thing in and out, but I think it's turned out really well. And it's been sitting on my desk and I've just been playing some games of one page rules, grim, dark future firefight. So like the skirmish game playing by myself and hit friends now, nah, but that's just been really fun and it's just yeah it's really easy to kind of change the configuration i need a good gaming mat or something just so it like really solidifies the immersion what do you think of this paint job do you have any suggestions any questions would you like to see these in a future battle report if you'd like to watch another video you can click over here otherwise thank you for watching and happy hobbying